This is the HMAR Mobile Tech channel. Today I'm working on a 2002 Volkswagen Beetle 1.8 liter with a turbo. And I'm doing a uh, air pump, secondary air pump check valve or combi valve replacement on this today. And um, this is after you've checked everything else, uh, checking the secondary air injection solenoid, doing a resistance check on it, make sure it's between 25 and 35 ohms and make sure that you check for any of the hoses that are going from the air injection pump. And this is the air injection pump there. And then here's the hoses. And then uh, this one goes to the combi valve and this one here goes to the air cleaner box. And so you wanna make sure that you check these hoses for cracks or damage, make sure that there's no issues with them connecting onto their, their ends where they're gonna be connecting onto the air cleaner box or down here at the uh, air injection pump or back at the combi valve. And then you want to make sure that you um, uh, just basically take the hoses off. And how you do that is you'll you'll take and you'll pinch, you'll pinch here, and then you'll just wiggle it until it basically backs off. And I've already taken most of this apart to make it easier to film this. And um, uh, and so you'll you'll just be real gentle, and you'll pinch these, and you'll pull back at the same time, and just making sure that you. Uh, uh, once you get them off, you can spe inspect them and make sure that there's no leaks and make sure they're not cracked, make sure they're not damaged, no restrictions or anything like that. And then also look inside the pump itself to make sure there's no blockages or anything like that. And then, um, so the first step to replacing this combi valve here is, um, this is the valve that, that we're going to be replacing today. This is the combi valve here. Okay, so... The tools you're going to need are a stubby or a regular handle 3 8 drive ratchet with an extension, a 10 millimeter headed socket. This will be removing the air cleaner box. You'll need a stubby ratchet with a 5 millimeter uh, hex bit tip on it there. And then this is to clean the port that goes down in the cylinder head. And you'll use a little bit of brake parts cleaner for that. You'll need a pair of slip joint pliers and then you'll need a pair of hose removal the smaller, the medium size of the smaller one is fine. Just, just find which one works uh, best for that diameter of the hose you're going to be removing. And then so back over here, um, so um, you'll pinch this clamp with the uh, hose pliers, uh, hose clamps, excuse me, um, with the uh, uh, slip joint pliers. And then you'll take the mass airflow sensor connector off. And then you will take the, uh, this connector off here by pinching it and pulling it back, and then you'll just remove the air cleaner box out of the way. Um, there will be a 10 millimeter headed bolt down there, and then there'll be one over here that I've already removed. And so once you get those out, then you can remove the air cleaner box. And uh, it's got a little hole down there for this part that will interface with that. So it's got that little part that holds it in. So I'll get this out of the way here. And then, so um, then you've got this whole area exposed and then you uh, make sure you disconnect the negative side of the battery. You'll need a 10 millimeter socket for that. And then you can just gently move these hoses out of the way. Bungee cords I found that were helpful. And then, uh, so you'll, you'll drain the cooling system and before you remove this hose here, you're going to take that um, hose that I told you about that's 13 millimeter or half inch and you're going to put your catch pan bucket under there, underneath the car, and come under here. And you'll see as you move this shroud out of the way, you'll see there's the, uh, the petcock, the drain valve for the radiator. And so you'll slip that hose around there. And then you'll use the, uh, just some sort of a nut driver with a... Uh, T25 that's going to remove uh, probably about eight of these here to remove that plastic little, you know, mud splash cover under here to take that off to get it out of the way so that you can drain the uh, radiator. Back up top here, um, you're going to see that there is a hose that connects this bypass coolant valve here. And so you'll pinch this hose clamp 
with your slip joint pliers and pull it back and move it out of the way somewhere where it won't come back up and interfere with, with your work. Make sure you got a catch pan under there to, to, uh, to catch all the coolant that's going to come down. Throw a couple of sheets of cardboard down. That'll really help. So then I found that it was, uh, it was a good idea to take this little, little check valve out. And then this is where you're going to be using the uh, hose clamp pliers to get this off because I found it really difficult. And if you've got an old Volkswagen like this or Passat or Jetta, it's, you know, that it has a similar engine and uh, you're going to need to get these things out of the way. So get that out of the way. And then, um, so what you'll do is you're going to remove two five millimeter hexed uh, bolts like this. And this is what I used to do it. So I got my stubby quarter inch drive ratchet with the five millimeter hex bit. And so I went underneath and uh, right underneath there's two, there's one here where I'm touching and then there's one on the other side. And um, what also I found that was very helpful is um, disconnecting this vacuum hose that goes all the way to the uh, to the vacuum solenoid for the for the secondary air injection um, combi valve here, and then um, disconnect that end there. That way you can kind of have, if you can't get your fingers in here to get this one off here, you got the other end off, so it'll make it easy for removal. Um, what I found was there's um, the uh, ignition coil harness right here. As you can see, it's got a clip around it, so I pop that up right there. And so um, I just used a, uh, a clip removal tool so I, I pried up on that one and then I came back over here and there's another one under here and you just use your fingers and just kind of pull like that and so you'll get that one out here that will interfere with you getting out this other inside um, uh, five millimeter hex uh, bolt that you got to remove and once you get that out of the way there's another clip here that you just got to take a flathead screwdriver and then just pry it until it opens up a little bit then you can get this hose this actual uh, the wiring out of the way uh, rather and then so once you have all that out of the way then you can just use your ratchet and get I left one in there already to make it easier to put the to, to put the new one back in and then make sure you retrieve your gasket okay because you will need that for putting on the new one if it didn't come with one and then so once you get the uh, the two bolts out you can just set that out of the way and then um, I showed at the beginning there's a wire brush, so you'll stick a wire brush down there with a little bit of brake parts cleaner and clean that hole out right there. Make sure it's good. And then uh, there's the other there's the other bolt that's sticking out just a couple threads. And and that's really all that there is to it. And um, so just uh, just be careful when you're pulling stuff apart because this plastic is brittle and, and I, I have broken stuff a lot doing these types of repairs. And uh, be careful with this uh, water outlet here. Just be gentle with it. Um, it. It felt like it wanted had a little bit of flex to it, but um, uh, just be careful and not. You don't want to manhandle these hoses off. Just be gentle, and, and you'll get them off. So when you got the combi valve back on, and make sure that you have the little oval metal gasket that goes in between the uh, the um, valve and the uh, um, piece that mounts onto the cylinder head. And you'll want to make sure that that's good and in place. And then once you get the uh, the uh, five millimeter hexed um, bolts in there uh, by hand going in easily, and then you start tightening them down. Once you just tighten down a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other side, and uh, until you get it evenly tightened. And then once you feel everything kind of getting snug, um, I found it very difficult to get a torque wrench in here, so I couldn't do it. So I just used my my stubby ratchet, as you see where my, my thumb is touching it, and I just got them to where they started to feel tight. And then I just basically went about maybe like a, a, a tenth of a turn or an eighth of a turn uh, rotation a little bit more just to make them feel a little bit past snug. Remember, these are going into aluminum threads. So it's better to not go too tight than to go too tight um, and because you can always go back and you can go like another eighth or tenth of a turn if you need to later on if there's any leaks.
but this is the way that I did it. This is the way it works. And in this case, there's just no way to get a torque wrench in there. And then so once you've got that done and you're certain everything's good, um, I found that um, uh, it's real easy to use this uh, heavy duty silicone spray on the ends here that go back onto the combi valve and then the air cleaner box and then wherever you're going to reconnect them because they have a rubber o-ring in there so this stuff really helps kind of lube it up and get it get it get things to go on real easy to make the job go back together like butter so make sure you get your coolant hose back on and get your clamp back in and then uh, make sure everything's all good and you got your your vacuum hose connected and you got it routed properly and then you got all your your wire uh, loom connectors back in the way everything should be all the way from here all the way back to your valve your solenoid here all right so the final steps here are make sure that you Put back everything that you took apart, put the connectors back onto the valve and the secondary air injection pump, your air cleaner boot is back on, your little check valve and your little hose there is all back onto the metal pipe, your mass airflow sensor is connected, air cleaner box is good and tight, reconnect the battery. Uh, you'll go ahead and make sure that you, uh, whatever sensors you disconnected, reconnect, make sure all the hoses are routed properly the way they, the way they came off and uh, stick the cover back on and then don't forget to tighten up the uh, by hand the uh, the petcock drain valve of the radiator and then put your uh, your um, mud splash back on and then go ahead and top off your coolant and um, for when it's cold you'll just put it down here somewhere around the middle of the container um, the expansion tank rather and then um, you'll go ahead and, and run a purging process and you'll start the engine and let it idle turn the heater on to about three quarters <coughs> and then um, just make sure that uh, you wait till the thermostat opens and then um, uh, if you had the check engine light on prior go ahead and, and uh, erase the uh, all the fault codes in the memory um, and then uh, then double check your coolant before you leave and go do a quick road test to make sure everything drives and feels good no problems check engine light doesn't reappear, you're good to go. If there are no issues or the check engine light turns on or something like that, maybe go back and check your uh, your work and make sure that, that um, you got everything right there and uh, that'll usually fix it. Um, if this does not fix your problem, uh, there might be some further testing that you need to do. Um, I'm not going to make a whole video covering the whole process of checking every single component because it's just too long. But I already did all my work on this, so I already know that that was um, what the problem was, was the uh, combi valve. And I believe you're supposed to replace them at 100,000 miles. And so I believe that this is just a part of the uh, maintenance that needed to be done on it. So make sure everything's all good and back together and ready to go. And then lower the vehicle on the ground if you had it up on jack stands and go road test it and verify your repair. If you guys are getting some good information out of my videos and you guys are learning from me and you guys want to see more, please subscribe, like, and share. Thanks for watching. This is HMAR Mobile Tech with another video. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.